Hello again, church family. It is so good to be able to come back again and bring you a message that God's laid on my heart. Uh, it's just a, a message that, that is preparing us when that trumpet sounds or when God does call you home. So uh, just be in prayer for me as I bring this message. It's entitled, Well Done. But before we start, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come thanking you so much for all your blessings. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for just loving us like you do. Thank you for just uh, allowing us to even come to worship and, and uh, even online like we're doing, Lord, to never stop doing your work, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, I pray right now that every mind, every heart, every ear is open to hear your word this, uh, today, Lord. I just pray, dear God, that you just, just use people that you've called in a mighty way to take this in and go out and do something with it, Lord. It's not just for us sitting up here talking and bringing your word. It's to go out and do something, Lord. we got to walk that walk instead of just talk that talk. So, God, use us all. Hide us all behind the cross, Lord, as we go out and do your work. And, God, let everything be about you today. Put John Russell somewhere else. Let you stand in front of me, Lord. And everything comes out of my mouth. Let it be from you. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise, God. praise God. I want to ask you a question. What do you think of when you think of well done? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. God laid this on my heart driving down a, uh, in, my, in my truck one day. I had my uh, radio on, and there's that song that's called Well Done. And it says so much in that song about, about coming to meet Jesus face to face. And what are you gonna, what's it going to be like? You know, and, and, and God's just laid that on my heart. But anyway, the funny part of what I thought about, uh, about well done, is when I go to a, a restaurant, which I haven't been for quite a while, none of us have, but when I go to a restaurant and I order a steak, and the first thing they ask me is, how do you want it cooked? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the first thing I tell them, I want it well done. I want it cooked. I don't want no pink showing. Burn it. I don't care. Just don't bring no pink with it. And that's just me. But there was an elder with me one time for breakfast. I never will forget this. And I ordered an uh, egg, and I ordered them over easy. And if you know what eggs are over easy, you just cut into it, and the yellow just goes everywhere. I love it that way. And he looked over at me, and he says, I need to ask you a question. He was so serious, too. And he says, how can you order a steak burnt and order eggs running? He says, it don't make sense. And I thought about that. It doesn't make sense. But that's the way I've always done it all my life. I like my eggs over easy, and I like my steak well done. But anyway, let's get to, let's get to the serious part of well done. Uh, I want to talk to you about a, a parable, the parable of the bags of gold. This is in uh, Matthew uh, 25. And uh, Matthew 25, the whole chapter is Jesus talking. The whole chapter of Matthew 25 from the very beginning of the first verse of that chapter all the way to the end of that chapter, it's all about Jesus talking. And what Jesus is trying to tell us, get ready that you're going to stand before my heavenly Father. You're going to stand before Jesus one day, and he's going to hold every one of us accountable. And he's either going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, or he's going to say, get behind me. Yeah. Get away. Get out. You're going straight to hell. That's hard to, for Jesus to tell us that. But he will tell us, the ones that do not accept him, he will tell them to get out. You're going to hell. And you've only got one choice right down here, right now. You've got two choices, but you've got one chance right now. Right this minute, you hear me? That trumpet could sound right this minute. Are you going to say yes to Jesus? Or are you going to just say, I'll do it later? There might not be no later. That trumpet could go off right before I get through bringing this word. It might go off right this minute. We got to be ready. We want to be able to go and stand before Jesus and He'll say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. I can't wait to that time. I can't wait to that time. Let's look what scripture says about the parable of the bags of gold. You know, uh, let me let me say this a little bit and kind of get into the story. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit of this story. Uh, there was a, a master, and I want you to think about this master as Jesus, because that's what Jesus is referring to. But he says, There's a master. And the master was going on this trip. He was going on a long journey. He was going to be gone for quite a while. And he needed somebody. He needed his servants that he trusted to take care of some things for him. You know, I thought about that. 
I thought about somebody being a power of attorney. What is power of attorney? A power of attorney, let me explain it to you. Power of attorney is someone taking care of somebody that ain't able, that's not able to take care of things themselves, but they trust that person to do it just like they would do it if they was able to still do it. There's some people that, that, that's a power of attorney that don't do that. They, they do more for their sales with their things. But truthfully, we're supposed to do the way that person used to do it. Amen. And they entrust you. They, they, they sit right there and they say, I want you to do this. I trust you with everything I got. They trust you with their finances. They trust you with their health. Because sometimes you even got to feed them. Sometimes you've got to bathe them. Sometimes you've got to take care of them. I went through that my own life, taking care of somebody. I literally had to, and I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just telling you, he had called me to be power of attorney. And I literally took care of this man for 10 years, 10 full years of my life, because he trusted me. He was like a grandfather to me, and he trusted me with everything. He, he trusted me with his finances. He trusted me with his health. He trusted me with his life. He turned it all over to me to take care of it. And I thought about that now as I, as I prepared this lesson. You know, did I do a good enough job for him? Was he pleased with me before God took him home? Did I do what I was supposed to do? And that's what we're going to stand before Jesus. And, and we're going to have to answer and say, did I do what I'm supposed to do. Well, listen, this master that called these servants in, he knew all three of them. He called three of them in, but he truly knew them. See, Jesus knows us. He knows our hearts. He knows how far that he, that he could tell us something to do, and we're going to do it. He knows every one of our hearts. But let me say this. The, the master, when he called in the servants, he gave all three of them different talents. Gold, in other words. He gave them all three different talents. The first one he called in, he gave them five talents. The second one he called in, he gave them two talents. And the third one, he gave them one. But let's get into scripture. In Matthew 25, 20, 21, it says, The man who had received the five bags of gold brought the other five master, he said. You entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done. I love that. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. I want you to think about Jesus now. Has Jesus called you to go and do something? Has he, has he trusted you with something that's great and something that's great and big? Has he called you to go to a nursing home? Has he called you to go to the prisons? Has he called you to go to uh, someone that, that does not know him and, and just share Jesus to that person? What has Jesus trusted you? What has the great master trusted you with? He's gave you things to do. Are you doing them? You know, we're all sitting here. I remember Joy preaching this last past Sunday about someone that, that is not even reading their Bible. A Christian person not even reading their Bible. Has God called you to study his word while we're all home right now? Has he called you to study his word and get closer to him? Has he called you to go and call somebody on the phone? You know, I shared the last time I preached about how our elders and deacons and different ones of the church is working hard, even behind the scenes. Has he called you to go and call somebody and tell them about him? Has he called you to go and call someone and say, Jesus loves you. No matter what you're going through, Jesus loves you. That's all we got to do is share Jesus. He, he's, this is his talent that he's given you. He's called you to go and do something. Is he, are you going to stand before him when that trumpet sounds or when your time has come? Are you going to stand, you going to stand before Jesus? Or is he going to say, my good and faithful servant, well done? Come on in. Come on in. In Matthew 25, 24 through 25, the man who had received one bag of gold came and said, Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See? 
Here is what belongs to you. I want you to just think about this just a minute. You're going to stand before Jesus. And if you don't know him, if you haven't accepted him in your life, if you chose the world instead of Jesus while he was here on this world, you better be starting to think of some excuses right now. It's not going to do you no good. Amen. See, he had excuses. See, the, the man with the five talents and even the man I didn't share that had the two talents, they both done what they're supposed to do. They took them, invested it, and, and doubled them. And Jesus said, my good and faithful servant, I will give you more to do. I will give you better things. I will fill you with blessings. You know, pastor sometimes says, if you don't want the blessings, I'll take them. Give them to me. Jesus has got so many blessings for us that he wants to give to us, but he has to entrust with us what we're going to do with them. Hallelujah. He does. He has to entrust with us what we're going to do with those blessings. And he will give them to them. See, he knew this is what my heart feels like. That one with five talents and the one with two talents and the one with one talent, the one with five talents, he knew he could give him more. Amen. He knew that he'd give him five talents. Why didn't he split them all equally? Why didn't he bring all three of them in and say, here, I'm going to split all three of these because I know what you're going to do with them. No, he already knew their hearts. He knew the one with five talents would do more with the five talents. He knew the one with two talents would do more with the two talents. And he knew the one with one talent would do nothing. Are you the one that's doing nothing? Are you the one that, that, that don't have time for Jesus? Even through all this coronavirus, you've got more time than you've ever had. What are you doing with Jesus right now? Is he going to look down upon you and say, no more? It's finished? It's over? You've only got a chance right now to turn from that way. Turn your eyes back on Jesus. Listen, you might be a Christian. You might know Jesus, but you're not living the life of Jesus. You might know Jesus. Listen, Satan, the devils, the angels, the, the, the devils themselves, the evil beings out there that's going all over this place, they know who Jesus is. They know who Jesus is. Do you know Jesus, and are you doing what Jesus is telling you to do? Are you taking your talent and digging a hole and burying it to have it later? To, to use it for your own glory, to use it for yourself. You know, I said something about being power of attorney. Are you doing the right things if you're called power of attorney? See, Jesus has called us to be power of attorney over him. He has called us to be the power of attorney over him. We have got the Holy Spirit that comes and lives in us. Jesus is going to be with the Father. So he allows the Holy Spirit to come and live with us the minute we say yes to him. He allows the Holy Spirit to guide us, direct us, to use us to do his glory. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with your talents? I want to think about this. I think about our tithes and offerings. Preach, the pastor has brought this uh, every time he gets up here and says, uh, preaches a message. He always says, what are you doing with your tithes? You know, the church, OACchurch.com, uh, you can give your tithe. You can, you can bring it to, call one of the deacons or one of the elders or one of the pastors. We'll make sure the tithes comes to the storehouse where you're supposed to do. What are you doing with your tithes? What are you doing with the money that the government gave you? I know all of us are supposed to got free money, got money that's given to us. Are you, are you taking your 10% and giving it to, to the church? To God's house? What are you doing with your tithes? Are you bearing them for yourself? Are you bearing them for, for next time that you might need it? Do you trust God enough to do right now to, to give your 10% to God? Listen, churches all over the world that, that's truly preaching Jesus needs their tithe and offering just like they did when churches were wide open. The church still got to run, still got to open up, still got to pay bills. What are you doing with your tithe? Is Jesus, are you going to stand before Jesus one day and try to make an excuse that when he asks you, what did you do with the 10%? I only ask you for 10. What did you do with it? Ooh, I hate to be that one that says, I buried it. I wanted it for later. I needed it. I needed it. And he's going to say, get behind me. Get away from here. You bad, evil servant. I don't want to be that one. Do you? I don't want to be that one. In Matthew 25, 26, 27, his master replied. I want you to think about this before I read it. This is Jesus talking to the one 
that's denied him. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant, so scattered, so you knew that I harvested where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Jesus is saying, what have you done with what I gave you to do with? You were supposed to went out and told someone about me. You were supposed to went to the to the jails, as I said earlier, or to the nursing homes, which we can't go right now. You could at least make a phone call. You've got ways to get a hold of people and tell them about me. Every one of us has got somebody in our family that we know in our hearts by their fruits. They don't know who Jesus is. Every single one of us. There's not a person that somebody in their family that that fruit is not showing Jesus. And all we got to do is not go over there and beat them up. It's say, you know, Jesus loves you. That's all you got to say. Jesus loves you. Plant that seed, as I preached not too long ago. Plant that, plant that seed and let somebody else water it. And let the Holy Spirit lead them to salvation. Lead them to salvation. I want everyone to be able to stand before Jesus when that time comes. And he looks down and says, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want us all there. I want us all there. Look at verse 28, what the master does. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. See, Jesus knows our hearts. He knows our hearts. He, like I said earlier, he knows the one with five bags, the one with two bags, and he knows the one with one bag. He knew that he could not trust him. But he gave him a chance. He gave him a chance. He's giving you a chance right now. He's giving each and every one of you a chance right now to change from that away and to take that one that he gives you and go tell that one about him. That's what it's all about is for us to reach out of this building and go as we go out into the world when we when this all this coronavirus is over and it's opened up again and we're going back out into the world. Listen, we're going to be a different church. We're going to be different people. We're going to have to start living different as we go into this new time and this new season because God says, I want you to go with joy, happiness, and spirit of love that I have gave you and tell someone about me. That's what it's all about. Time is short. The trumpet's getting ready to sound. I say this all the time. It's getting ready to happen. Just look around the world. Open your Bible, as I told you. Study the end of times and see if all of it had not been fulfilled and Jesus is ready to come back right now and call us all in. And listen, I'm going to be the one gone. Me and Pastor are not going to be here anymore. And listen to me. Are you going to be here? Are you going to be left behind? Do you truly know Jesus or you just know his name? Is he going to say, well done to you, my good and faithful servant. You're coming home now. And what you've done is good. Is he going to tell you that? My goodness, we better wake up. We better wake up. And in this same chapter, it finishes up with this. It talks about the sheep and the goats. Now listen, I have had both sheep and I've had both goats. I've, had, I've raised sheep and I've raised goats. And I'm going to tell you, sheep are soft and woolly and and. and a lot of them sometimes are just like Snow White. They will listen to me when I would feed and call them in. They would come right up to feed because they, they heard the master. I was the one that fed them and took care of them. And they knew my voice. And this is honest truth. I've had somebody else to be in there with me and walk up there and say one or two words and them sheep would go. They didn't know that person's voice. I literally seen that happen. And I didn't think a whole lot about it until I started bringing this message that God prepared this message today. And I thought about that time when that person was talking and they, they took off. They wouldn't even come back up there. And then I raised goats. I, one time we, me and uh, uh, my son-in-law uh, raised a bunch of goats. We, we uh, went into this thing that they had meat goats. And we literally had a hundred meat goats dropped off at our farm. And we took care of those goats and they was the hardest things to take care of. They wouldn't listen to you. They was hard-headed like me, I guess, and they wouldn't, they just wouldn't listen to you. And I'm going to tell you, they stunk. A, a, a sheep is not near the smell of a goat. A goat literally stinks. And so I thought about, that's why Jesus 
said what he said in this parable, what he talked about in this parable. But let's talk, let's go into scripture on this. It says, Matthew 25, 31 through 32, it says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory. Woo! Listen, that right there should just make you have chill bumps. That should make you just, just shout and praise God. When the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? When Jesus comes in his glory and all, listen, all, I can't say that enough, all the angels with him, not just a few angels, not just one or two angels. Can you imagine all the angels with him? He will sit on his glorious throne. Oh, and listen to this, all again. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. What are you this morning? What are you today? What are you? Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Are you a sheep or are you a goat? I, if you look up here, I've got some scriptures over here. This is going to tell you who the sheep is and who the goat is. Let's go through them. Let's talk about the sheep first. That's who God's called. In John 10, 4, 27, it says, Know and follow Jesus. If you know and follow Jesus, you're going to be a sheep. Does Jesus know you? It says Jesus knows them. John 10, 14. Does Jesus know you? Have you done what you're supposed to do in life? Does he truly know who you are? You know, I'm going to stop there just a minute. Every one of us is numbers here on earth. We are all numbers. Every one of us. You got a social security number. Listen, they don't even know who you are. They just know you by your number. You got a, a, a bank number uh, that you deposit your money. They don't even know. Listen, a lot of these great big banks, maybe your, your small banks in little towns, but these great big banks, they don't know who you are. You go by a number. That's all we are anymore is a number. But listen, the day that Jesus calls you home, it's, he tells me in the Lamb Book of Life, if you truly accept him and know him, you are written, not a number. John Russell is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when Jesus calls me and he says, my good and faithful servant, come here, John Russell, he's not going to say my social security number come there. He's going to say my name. And then I'm going to stand before him. He knows who I am. Do you know who he is? Amen. That's the question. He knows my name. He knows your name. If you truly know Jesus today, listen to me. That time is coming. It's coming soon, church. Let's wake up. We see churches empty. We would have never dream that. <clears throat> we would have never dreamed we would see a church empty. Does Jesus know you? Next one. Matthew 25, 37. Are righteous. Are righteous. How is your heart? How is your heart? Even though you're a Christian, you know that you're going to be with Jesus. How is your heart here on earth? Do you care about somebody else? Do you have, uh, is the righteousness of God all over you? That's who Jesus is. That's the sheep. And Jesus gives eternal life. Only through Jesus can we have eternal life. There's no other thing, no other person, nobody out there that can give you eternal life except Jesus. The only one is Jesus. That's in John 10, 28. Then, are eternally secure. Are you secure? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are going to be with Jesus? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt if your last breath happened right this minute while I'm talking, will you be with Jesus? Are you, are you secure? John 10, 28 through 29. And then, are blessed by the Father? Oh my goodness. My goodness. Is, is Jesus going to say to, to the Father, I am pleading, I have gave my blood for John Russell. And he loves you, Father. He cares about you, Father. He loves you just like I love you. Do you truly, are you blessed? And the Father loves you that much that he gave his son. If you accepted him, that's the blessing. Are you getting all the blessings from God and using them for his glory? Think about that. There's Matthew 24, 34. And then last on the sheep. Some serve Jesus unknowingly. Unknowingly. That's Matthew 25, 37. Now, you know your heart. You know how you're living. You know how you're focused on doing what Jesus has called you to do. Let me see if you're a goat now. Remember how I said they stink? They're hard-headed. They don't listen. 
They're selfish. Let's see what the ghosts are going to be like. First of all, they don't believe Jesus. They don't believe him. They know who he is, maybe, but they don't believe him. They don't care enough about him to say, Jesus, I'm putting you first in my life. They don't, they, they'd rather have finances, money. They'd rather have sports and pleasure. They'd rather have even their families they put before Jesus. And Jesus said, nobody comes before anything or nobody comes before me. Nobody. Don't believe in Jesus. John 10, 26. Jesus doesn't know them. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine standing before Jesus on that judgment day? And he says, get behind me. Get away. I don't know you. What are you going to say? What? There's no more chances. It's all over then. Why would you want to take that chance? Why would anybody? I don't care what kind of sin in person you are or what you've done wrong. Accept Jesus. And he says, I promise right now if you accept me, I will not never know what your past was. I will forgive all your sins as far as the east is from the west. And then <clears throat> our self-righteous, Matthew 7, 23 and 25, 44. Self-righteous. Is it about you? Is it about what you've got to have? You know, is it about, is it about that talent that God gave you with a blessing and you took it for yourself instead of giving some of it to somebody else or even giving all of it to somebody else? What are you doing? Is it about you instead of Jesus? Is it what you want, what I got to have? I, 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 I. What's it about? I mean, it's so sad that we get into a, a, living in a world that, that people, just, it's all about us. It's about what we want. It's about what I got to have. If it don't go my way, it's not going at all. Shame on us. I don't want to be that goat. I want to give. I don't want it to all be about me. Refuse life, John 3, 16 and 5, 40. Condemn themselves. This I get so aggravated that people speak negative things about themselves. I, Pastor, I just get so aggravated when you, you ask somebody how they're doing and they start telling you the whole history of everything that's going wrong and everything. Listen, get joy in your heart. Get Jesus in your heart. When somebody says something to you, say, Praise God, I'm doing great. I'm going to speak blessings upon me. Listen, I'm going to speak good health. I'm going to, listen, I'm going to speak finances upon myself. I'm going to speak good health on myself. I'm going to speak joy that I get up in the morning and I'm able to do what I can do. I thank God that I need to still work. I thank God that I can walk and talk and hear and breathe and just see things. I thank God that I, I don't have this coronavirus and I'm not going to get it. I thank God for that, not because of me, because of what Jesus did for me and died in me and gave me him inside of me. There's nothing can stop us from doing what Jesus has called us to do. I'm not going to be that goat. I'm that sheep. I'm that lamb. Curse themselves. Oh, I, I tell you why I can't even hear, can't stand to hear a curse word anymore. It just bugs me to know me. I guess my mother taught that to me when I was a kid and I used God's name in vain when I was just a little Little kid, didn't even know what it meant. But I knew when she took that fly swatter in her hand backwards and the wire hit me across my rear end, running up a set of steps, I knew that the first thing I did was not right, saying God's name in vain. And I thank God, thank God for a mother that loved me enough to wear me out over that. And listen, right now, I've never said it since that one time I was a kid. And I, I, I give God all the glory for that, for giving me a mother that, that Taught me not to cuss. Not to cuss. And then the last one, which is so, so easy to become a, a, a goat with this. Some do religious work. I'm going to tell you, listen to me. This church not, does not preach religion. This pastor that we've got, Pastor Joy, does not preach religion. I don't pre preach religion. When you go before Jesus, you're not going to look up there and say, Baptist, Catholic, community church, I don't care what kind of church you go to, as long as it's Jesus, you're not going to go to heaven and see none of that. That's religion. Get it out. That's a goat. Do you want to go stand before Jesus and he tells you because of your religion that you took more of religion than you did Jesus? He's going to say, get behind me, you're out of here. Because of religion? Are you crazy? 
Come on, church. Come on, people that's listening. Don't let religion be your God. There's no such thing. There's only one God, and that's Jesus Christ Almighty. Don't be a goat. Don't be a goat. <clears throat> Matthew 25, 33 says, He will put the sheep on his right, and he will put the goats on his left. Now, I'm going to go ahead and paraphrase this first part, then we're going to look at the goat part. The first part is the sheep that Jesus tells us. He says, if you go out here and you go to the hospitals, you go to the nurse, you feed the ones that's hungry. And listen, I, I, I love this church because this church has started helping people the minute that we started two years ago, I think, Pastor, a little two years. We started helping people with finances. We started helping people with with food to eat, we started helping people with clothes. Now, I know this church at the very beginning was taking money and helping people all over the place when we was in the barn. But now we're doing clothes. We got a clothes closet. We got food pantry. And we're helping people as God shows us how to help them. And we're doing what God showed us to do. And we're being obedient. So when this church stands before God and they all know Jesus, He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant of Open Arms Church. Not because of what the church is, because of what the people of the church, which is the church, are doing to reach God's people out there in this world. I'm so grateful that this church has got the love and the love that they've got for one another to go out here and give time, give their, their, their talents, their gold, give people what they need. I've never seen this church when the doors open and somebody's lost something they need, we take up an offering, that we don't overfill that offering and give it to them and help them. I've never seen this church ever turn that down. Listen to me. Is God going to say, you good and faithful servant, you've done all this stuff. Come on, you are the sheep that I call. But, but in closing, in Matthew 24, 41, 43. I want you to look at this picture. I want, to, I want you to look at this picture. How could you, how could you know a, a child? Now I'm talking to the ones that are goats right now. I just shared ones in the, what you're doing as a sheep. You're out feeding, you're out doing, you're out telling people about Jesus. But you goats, listen to me. Can you look at these little kids that, that, that are dirty and, and don't have food? Are, are you going to be turning them down? And sometimes we judge people when they're standing there holding. I've even caught myself judging. And I had to ask God to forgive me as I was preparing this lesson. Listen, I don't know what that person's going through is holding that sign. You know, if he's out here getting uh, money, want money just to go and do drugs, that's between him and God. The Holy Spirit tells me to go give him something or buy him some food. I'm going to McDonald's or to whatever I can get right now and give him the food. If God lays it on my heart. Don't judge that person. You might wind up being a goat and you don't realize it. Well, let me show you what scripture says. This is Jesus talking. Then he will say to those on his left, that's your goats, depart from me. Do you think you could ever stand to hear that word from Jesus? Depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devils and his angels. For I was hungry. Jesus is saying this. He says his people out there that was here on this earth, they were hungry and you gave them nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave them nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed some clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. He says, if you did it to these You've done it to me, and you're going to stand before Jesus on that judgment day, that last day when that trumpet sounds, or when Jesus calls you home. You're going to stand before him, and you're going to be on your knees. I just know you are, and you're going to be looking up and saying, yeah, but give me one more chance. I just need that one more chance. I will become a sheep if you just give me that one more chance. He says, I never knew you. You had the chance here on earth, and you took that chance, and you said, it's all about what I want. Listen to me, church. My heart is, is crying out for you right now. If you truly don't know who Jesus is, if you truly know who Jesus is and you're not doing the work of Jesus, listen to me. God says, I will tell you I never knew you. If God's telling you to go and do something right now, get on your phone right now and call somebody. If he's telling you to go and give something, he says, 
I want you to give this to the church. I want you to go and, and feed somebody yourself. Don't tell them I'm, you're doing it. Just go and get it done. Don't take boast and, and pleasure and, and help somebody and say, look what I did. Just go and do what God's called you to do right now. I feel right this minute that God is dealing with hearts right now. He's trying to say, listen, I want you to be a sheep. I don't want you to be a goat. I want you to follow me. I don't want you to follow Satan. I want you to quit being about self and be all about Jesus. Church, please. Please, people that's watching. Maybe you're not even a church member here. Please listen to me. It's time. It's time. This, this world, this wicked world, is God is getting ready to call his people home. We're getting ready to rapture out of this place. And it's getting ready to come soon. Get prepared. Start doing things. Start doing things for Jesus and, and, and not taking the credit. Give it all to Jesus. There's nothing we can do without Jesus, I promise you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I love you so. I just thank you that, that you're looking down on us right now and say, well done. Well done, pastors. You're doing the job that I've called you to do. He says, well done, deacons. You're doing the job that I've called you to do. Well done, elders. You're doing the job that I've called you to do. Well done, congregation. You're doing the job that I've called you to do. Let's step up this new season. Let's step up and start doing as a sheep is supposed to do. Let's start going out and, and, and helping people and caring for people and loving people and tell them most of all about Jesus and what he did, how he died for each and every one of us. And he says, I will love you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I come now and I want you to know that I will quit looking about anything that you've done in your past the minute you accept me in your heart and say, I'm sorry. It's so easy, Lord, for people to get saved. I just pray to God that Satan is, I know he's sitting there knocking that door telling me it's a lie. But God, you're bigger than Satan. So I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for this message that you gave me, Lord, about being well done. Because I know right now there's a lot of good people that you're going to, going to stand before you and you're going to say, well done my good and faithful servant. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. And all God's people again said, Amen. Amen.